This set of videos for section 3-4 will probably be several of them. I'm going to start with the adjoint of a matrix. So these are all under the umbrella of applications of things we can do with determinants of a matrix. If I can find the adjoint of a matrix, I can use the adjoint to find the inverse of a matrix. So there is quite a process for finding the adjoint of a matrix, but there's quite a process for finding the inverse also. Remember the inverse you could do by taking a matrix and the identity matrix and then row reducing it until you got the inverse on one side and the identity matrix on the other side. Well, the process for finding an adjoint works like this. Suppose I have matrix A, which is the matrix 3, 2, negative 1, 1, 6, 3, 2, negative 4, 0. Okay, so that's this matrix A. The first thing I need to do is I need to find the three cofactors and the determinant of matrix A. So find three cofactors, and technically they could be any three. So find three cofactors and the determinant of matrix A. Let's try to do this in some organized fashion. So I'll start with C11. That seems like a good spot to start. C11 is going to be negative 1 to the second, right? 1 plus 1 is 2. So I'm going to add those two ij's in the bottom. Negative 1 to the second. And then knock out row 1, column 1. I get a 6, 3, negative 4, 0. All right, 6 times 0 is 0, minus a negative 12 is just 12. So C11 is 12. You should play along at home because we got nine of these to do. Make sure you're doing them right as you go along. All right, C12, so now we're going to knock out row 1, column 2. That'll give me a negative 1 to the third. If I knock out row 1, column 2, I'm left with a 1, 3, 2, 0. All right, so that gives me 0 minus 6, but then it's going to be negative 1 times negative 6, which will give me a positive 6. Okay, so the minor is negative 6, the cofactor is 6. C13 will give me a negative 1 to the 4th, and then when I knock out row 1, column 3, I'm left with a 1, 6, 2, negative 4. So keep the same sign, 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, minus 12, gives me negative 16. All right, so the determinant of matrix A then, the determinant of matrix A is going to be A11, C11. Well, C11 is 12, plus A12, C12, which is 6, plus A13, C13, which is negative 16. Now I just have to scroll back up to the top of my matrix. And the numbers I'm looking for are 3, 2, negative 1. So 3 times 12 plus 2 times 6 minus 1 times negative 16. Fairly apparent that I should keep good track of my numbers and not make silly mistakes because if I make one sign mistake, my whole thing goes with it. So 3 times 12 is 36. 2 times 6 is 12. And then add another 16 because negative negative makes a positive. When I add all these things together, I get 64. So the determinant of matrix A is 64. All right, once we find those first three cofactors, then we've got to find the other six. All right, so my next step is find the other six cofactors. So find the remaining six cofactors. I see two ones, and I'm going to iterate across row two, column one, negative one to the third. And then what's the two by two that I come up with? If you write your column, your matrix down somewhere as we go through this, I think it'll be easier because I only have so much space up here. The original matrix, if I knock out row two, column one, is going to be that two and the negative one up on the top here and the negative four zero down there. So I've got 2, negative 1, 4, 0. All right, that gives me a negative 1 times 0 minus a negative 4, and then negative 1 times 4, negative 4. So there's C sub 2, 1. How about C sub 2, 2? That'll give me a negative 1 to the 4th. And then if I knock out row 2, column 2, I end up with a 3, negative 1. 
and 2, 0. All right, so negative 1 to the 4th is 1. That gives me a 0 minus a negative 2. That cofactor is 2. All right, what's C sub 2, 3? So now I've got to do negative 1 to the 5th, right? I'm adding those two subscripts. 2 plus 3 is 5. Knock out row 2, column 3, and I'm left with the two numbers up on the top, 3, 2, and then the two underneath it on the bottom, 2, negative 4. All right, that gives me a negative 1 times what? Negative 12 minus 4. Negative 1 times negative 16 is positive 16. All right, so now we're done with row 2. We got one more row to go, row 3. All right, so C sub 3, 1 gives me negative 1 to the 4th, and then knock out row 3, column 1. You get the four numbers that are in the top right-hand corner of the original matrix. 2, negative 1, 6, 3. That gives me 1, and then 6 minus a negative 6. So I get 12. All right, how about C sub 3, 2? This one will have the opposite sign because negative 1 to the 5th is a negative. And then knock out row 3, column 2. Row 3, column 2. And I'm left with a 3, negative 1. And then a 1, 3. Okay. So I get a negative 1 and then 3 times 3 is 9. Minus a negative 1 is 10. So that cofactor is negative 10. All right, one more to go. C sub 3, 3 is going to be negative 1 to the 6th. Knock out row 3, column 3, and I get just those four numbers in the top left. 3, 2, 1, 6. All right, that gives me same sign, right? Negative 1 to the 6th is a positive 1. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 2 is 16. All right, so now, if you've done this in an organized way, then that'll make the next step a whole lot easier. So you notice I've been keeping track of the C11s and the C12s and all that. That's because I'm going to assemble a matrix based on those locations. So my step three is assemble the matrix of cofactors. And it goes like this. We found C11, then we found C12, then we found C13, we found C21, C22, C23, we found C31, C32, and C33. So we're going to assemble the matrix of cofactors like that. So we find C11, that's the entry that goes in row 1, column 1, that's a 12. What goes in C12 is a 6. And the third one is negative 16. So basically, if you've been keeping track of my cofactors as I go down from top to bottom, they just become your rows across. 12, 6, negative 16. The next three were 4, 2, 16. And I can scroll right up so you can see the third group, 12, negative 10, and 16. All right, so that's the matrix of cofactors. Then to find the adjoint transpose this matrix to find the adjoint. To find the adjoint. Okay, so take that and transpose it, and the adjoint of our original matrix A is, instead of the 12, 4, 12 being the first column, 12, 4, 12 becomes the first row. 6, 2, negative 10 becomes the second row. Negative 16, 16, 16 becomes the third row. So if the question asks you what is the adjoint, then that's it. That's the adjoint. If you want to find the inverse, now take the adjoint and multiply the adjoint by 1 over the determinant. So remember, way back up, we had figured out that our determinant was 64. So we're now going to multiply this whole thing by 1 over 64. So we can do this in two steps. We can start by multiplying by 1 over 64 and writing each one as fractions, 12 over 64, 
6 over 64, negative 16 over 64. Then we've got a 4 over 64. We've got a 2 over 64, 16 over 64. And then the last column is, again, 12 over 64, negative 10 over 64, 16 over 64. I would simplify it at this point. I take all my fractions on the inside and simplify it. So I end up with 12 over 64. I can pull a 4 out of everything. So I get a 3 over 16. The one underneath it will be 3 over 32. And the bottom one is just negative quarter. 4 over 64 simplifies to 1 over 16. This will give me a 1 over 32. This will give me a 1 fourth. And then over here, I get again a 3 over 16. This will give me a negative 5 over 32 and a quarter on the bottom. All right. What we just found is the inverse, right? This is a inverse, which should lead us to a nice definition. And that is for an n by n matrix A, where A is invertible, which makes sense when you see where this is going, then A inverse is 1 over the determinant of matrix A times the adjoint of matrix A. Right? So if you can figure out what the adjoint of matrix A is, and you can figure out the determinant, then do 1 over the determinant times the adjoint. And so that's why I read the right, where A is invertible, because if A is not invertible, then there is no definition. All right, let's look at something just for fun. Let's take matrix A, and let's take its adjoint, and let's see what happens when we multiply them together. So matrix A was given as 3, 2, negative 1, 1, 6, 3, 2, negative 4, 0. The adjoint of matrix A, which we figured out by taking all the cofactors and then flipping it, was 12, 4, 12, 6, 2, negative 10, negative 16, 16, 16. Let's see what happens when we multiply the matrix by its adjoint. Well, the first one in the answer matrix a11 is going to be 3 times 12 plus 2 times 6 plus negative 1 times negative 16. I'm just writing this because the numbers are getting big. 36 plus 12 plus 16. Well, that's going to give you 48. 48 plus another 16 is 64. All right, so that's what goes in row 1, column 1. Now do row 1, column 2 you'll get 3 times 4 plus 2 times 2 minus 1 times 16. So 12 and 4 is 16, minus 16 is 0. Second entry is 0. All right, now do for the third one. You'll get 36 minus 20 minus 16. Well, 20 and 16 is 36. 36 minus 36 is also 0. All right. Now do row 1 by column 2. You'll get 12 plus 12. I'm sorry, 12 plus 36 is 48. Minus 48 is 0. Now do A22. A22, row 2 by column 2, you'll get 1 times 4 plus 6 times 2 plus 3 times 16, which is 48. 48 and 12 is 60, plus 4 is 64. Now, if you keep going, what's going to happen is you'll end up with another 0 over here, two more zeros over here, and a 64 in that third spot, right? 28 plus 40, no, sorry, 24 plus 40 will give you 64. And then a 0 in the third spot. Notice anything about those numbers down the diagonal? Those numbers down the diagonal are actually the determinant. 64, way back when, was the determinant of matrix A. And that's really not an accident. Why is this working? Well, look at row 1 by column 1. Right? If you do row 1, column 1. Row 1 is A11, A12, A13. Column 1 is made up of the cofactors 
that are transposed. So instead of them going C11 and then C21 next to it, and uh, sorry, C12 and next to it, and then C13 next to it, the C12 actually falls underneath it, and the C13 falls underneath that. And so what you end up with is A11C11 plus A12C12 plus A13C13. That is the determinant of the matrix. Do that then for the other ones down the diagonal, and you'll get the same thing. All the other entries then will turn out to be zero. So when you multiply the matrix by its adjoint, when you multiply a matrix by its adjoint, you get an n by n matrix with the determinant running down the column or running down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Just kind of a cool thing that you can do with the adjoint of a matrix. So we'll stop this one here, and we'll do another one with Kramer's rule in it.